أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم هو نصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعض We are going to start today إن شاء الله at سورة الفتح أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وَيَنْصُرُكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لِيَزْدَادُوا إِيمَانًا مَعَ إِيمَانِهِمْ وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا صدق الله العظيم The second Madani Surah of this group is Surah Al-Fatr The first was سورة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اور سورة القتال Now the timings of their revelation are very important سورة القتال اور سورة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم was revealed when the armed conflict phase was going to start it was the beginning of the قتال في سبيل الله And this Surah Fatah was revealed in the sixth year after Hijrah. When we may say that a four years war had come to some end, meaning thereby that the Kufr had understood that now they are no match for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Therefore they had to and they were forced to make a treaty with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared as a clear victory Sula Hudabiyya now the historical background is that Ghazmatul Ahzab it took place in the fifth year after Hijra and after that battle of Ahzab the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said to the Muslims that this was the last time that the Quraysh could dare to come and attack us. Now they will not be able to take this initiative. Now the initiative will be from our side. لَنْ يَغْزُوكُمْ قُرَيْشْ بَعْدَ عَامِكُمْ حَاذَا وَلَكِنَّكُمْ تَغْزُونَهُ Quraysh are not going to invade you, attack you after this year of yours. Now we shall take the initiative. So after that, he saw a dream, a vision. And the dream and vision of a prophet is also wahi, but wahi khafi. That is, not loud wahi, not jali wahi, but silent wahi, inspiration. To wahi a jali we call revelation, because it is verbal. The whole message comes with the wordings given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself. But inspiration is the English word for wahi khafi. Some idea comes to the mind or heart of the Prophet sallallahu He expresses it with his own words. The words are not divine. The words are from Muhammad sallallahu This is called wahi khafi. We may call them the silent wahi. So he saw a you know, dream that he and the Muslims they were performing Umrah. So he declared, as I told you, wahi of a prophet is also this khab, this, this vision and dream of a prophet is also wahi. So much so that Hazrat Ibrahim was ready to sacrifice his son 
the only son. Till that time he was the only son. Ishaq came later, alayhi salatu wa salam. Only on the basis of the vision. So now, the Prophet sent a call to all people that I am going to Umrah, perform Murak. Now whosoever can come should go with me. About 1400 people accompanied him. According to certain traditions, the number was 1800. Somewhere between 14 and 1800. When they reached there and the news came to the Quraysh of Makkah, they were very furious. We are never going to let Muhammad and his companions make Umrah here. So the position came very tense. And there was some negotiation going on. Hazrat Usman who was sent, but he was detained there due to some reasons. And then the rumor spread that he was killed, sallallahu alayhi wa On that, the Prophet took the bear from the Muslims who were present there. This is called bear to Rizwan, because it is mentioned in the surah, رضي الله عن المؤمنين is يبايعون كتحت الشجرة. So bear to Rizwan. It is called also bear al al-mawt. The bear was that we shall not go back from here. Though every one of us is killed here, they are al mouth. But when these news reached Bakka, now they were perturbed. The resolution, you know, determination on the part of the Prophet وسلم, and the Mu'mineen, the believers. So then some negotiations started and a treaty was concluded which is called the Treaty of Hudabiyah. It was in a way degrading to the Muslims. Because the first condition was that this year you have to go back without performing Umrah. But the next year you can come. We shall vacate, the, the Quraysh of Makkah said, we shall vacate Makkah for three days for you. We shall go to the mountains. You perform the rites of Umrah at peace. But this year you have to go back. And then it was a treaty for ten years, that there should be peace between us, no fight, no battle. And whosoever of the tribes of that area wanted, they could become party to the Quraysh. Whosoever wanted, they could become the partners of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So in this way, another thing which was degrading for Muslims was that if a Muslim escapes, for, for example a Muslim in Makkah, he has, he has come to believe, and his parents, they have tied him in chains. Somehow, he breaks the chains, and he comes to Medina, but Muslims will have to send him back. But if someone comes from Medina to Makkah, we will not be forced or obliged to send him back. So two, two things were there, which were unequal. So the Muslims as a whole, they were not happy at this treaty. Why are we making this treaty as the weaker party? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us strength. We can fight them. Why should we bow down? But the Prophet said, I am doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to do. When this treaty was concluded, then these ayat were revealed. And the immediate result of this treaty was that when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was fully secure from the southern part, southern side, from Meccan side, then he invaded Khaybar, which was to the north of Medina, conquered Khaybar. And it brought a lot of, you know, booty and you know, wealth to the Muslims, so that the Muslims became well-to-do, all of them. So this was the first result. That is the conquest of Khaybar. The second result was that when there was peace, the missionary dawah activity, it increased and intensified. The Prophet intensified his dawah and missionary activity. And secondly, because you know the tribes of the Arabia, they saw 
that Quraysh had to make a treaty with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does it mean? It means they have recognized Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then when you conclude a treaty with some party, you recognize him. So it means that that now they feel that Muhammad is a power to reckon with. So now there was a wave people accepting Islam. So this was the second fruit of this treaty. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna fatahna laka fatha mubina. We have granted you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a very clear and manifest victory. Le yaqfir laka Allahu ma taqaddam min zamiqa wa ma taakhir. So that Allah subhanahu wa taala should compensate for you any of your shortcomings, whether previous or later. I am translating zamb. It's not sin. This word we can't use for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Shortcomings. Wa yadiya ke sir, wa yatimma nima tahu aleka, and he and he so that he now completes and perfects his blessing over you. Wa yadiya ke sirat mustaqima, and guides you to the straight way. And I understand with this that now guides your struggle to establish the deen of Allah in a very straight line. Now the road is open. وَيَنْصُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps you with a mighty help. هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It is He who sent down the calm in the hearts of the believers because they were not happy but still because the Prophet was doing it, they took it. That was a discipline. And this was due to the calm that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down in their hearts. The yazdadu iman and ma'iman him, so that they should have more faith in addition to the faith that they already had. Walillahi dunudu samawati wallard. To Allah belong the armies and hosts of the heavens and the earth. Wakan Allahu aliman hakima. And verily Allah is all knowing, all wise. لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَعْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ So that he should admit the believer men and the believing women, gardens, underneath which rivers will be flowing. وَيُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّعَاتِهِمْ And acquit them of their evil deeds. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَوْضٍ عَظِيمًا And with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a very big triumph. And so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chastises the hypocrite men and women and those men and women who associate with Allah false gods who think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala evil thoughts. عَلَيْهِمْ دَائِرَةُ السَّوْءُ Against them shall be the evil turn of misfortune. وَغَذِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah will be angry upon them. وَلَعْنَهُمْ وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَهَنَّمَا And He will curse them and He will prepare for them the hell, وَسَعَتْ مَسِيرًا And it's a very evil destination. Actually the munafiqeen at that time, they thought that it's a big blunder that Muhammad is committing صلى الله عليه وسلم. They withheld. They did not go with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Only the Muminin al-Sadiqin went. The Munafiqin thought, he is going. Where he is going? He wants to meet Quraysh and also at Makkah. So they will never be able to return. This is given in further in the ayat. You will find this. They thought they will all be finished. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and all the Muslims who are going. You know, they will all be finished by Quraysh. So that was within their hearts. وَلِلَّهِ جَنُودُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْلَرْضِ To Allah belong all the hosts and armies of the heavens and the earth. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And Allah is ever mighty, wise. إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَزِيرًا We have sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as a witness and bearer of the glad tidings and a warner. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So that you, O believers, have real faith in Allah and His Messenger. وَتْوَعْزِرُوهُ وَتْوَقِّرُوهُ 
and you help the messenger and honor him. But to subbehu ho bukratam wa asila, and you glorify Allah subhanahu wa taala in the mornings as well as the evenings. Inna ladina yubayyuna ka inna ma yubayyuna Allah. Verily, those who are pledging themselves to you, actually they are pledging themselves to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Now this is the baya. What is baya? The root is baya. Baya means to sell. Baya bio to sell. So actually, iman. When a person says, "I accept Allah as my Lord," it is as if he he has sold himself to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and the price he will get in the hereafter, and that is Jannah. Now this, whatever he has, his life and his belongings, are a trust with him. He had already sold them. So whenever whosoever has purchased, he can demand, bring forth, give me. But who will demand on behalf of Allah? It was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the bear was, the sale was between the Mu'min and Allah. But on behalf of Allah, it was the position of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to demand them to come and expend their lives and their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa taala. So now this was the bear, a person you know. Had to put his hand over the head of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and pledge himself. But Allah here says that actual bayah he is doing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because bayah is between the believer and Allah. So what is this is what is said here? In the lazina you buy your own aka verily, those who are pledging themselves, giving their bayah to you, O Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, in the ma you buy your own Allah verily, they are pledging themselves and selling themselves. To Allah, Yadullah is fawqa adhim. I call this a tripartite agreement. There are three parties: hand of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. On this comes the hand of the the believer, Mu'min, who is pledging himself. Allah says there is another hand, third hand of Allah, above it, but it is invisible. Yadullah is fawqa adhim. The hand of Allah is there over their hands. فَمَنْ نَكَسَ Now whosoever breaks this pledge, فَإِنَّ مَا يَنْكُسُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ So he will break it to his own loss. فَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا أَحَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهَ And whosoever fulfills whatever he has made covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, فَسَيُوتِهِ أَجْرٍ عَزِيمًا To him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give A very mighty reward. So Yaqoolu al Mukhannafuna min al Arab. Now this second section that is referring to when the Prophet came back and he was going back to Medina after concluding the treaty. Now those things, those Munafiqin, they were thinking that he will never be able to come back. It's finished. The whole game is finished. And here Muhammad is coming, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in a, in a way victorious. Because the Quraysh had acknowledged him, recognized him that he is a power to reckon with. So Yaqoolu lakal mukhallafuna min al Arab. Now, when you return to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the desert Arabs who were left behind, who didn't join you, they will say, O Prophet, shagalakna amwaluna wahluna. Our possessions and our families kept us occupied. That is why we couldn't go with you. First of all, so ask Allah's forgiveness for us. Ya kuluna bi al-sinatihim. They are saying with their tongues, "Ma lasa fi kulubihim," but is not there in their hearts. Or from any amal kulaku min Allah shayyan. Ask them, who can avail anything against Allah if He intends to do you any harm? In arada bi kum dhoran. If somebody says, "Okay, my wife was very sick." I couldn't go with you, but could you cure your wife? If Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decreed death for your wife, or could not Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala give her the health without you? It's a matter of conviction. For my yamle ko lakum in Allah shayin in arada bikum dhabra. If Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has decided something evil for you, so who has the authority to stop him? 
How are other become nafa? If he has decided for you something good, so who can stop him? Balkan Allah bima kamalu na khabira. What you were doing, Allah was very much aware of it. Bal zanan tum. Now this is what was there in heart in this next ayah. Bal zanan tum Allah yan qaleb al Rasul wal Mu'minun ila ahlihim abada. Actually, you thought that the messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers would never return alive to their families. They are doomed. The game is finished. Was we in Azale ka fi kulu bekum? And this idea was made beautiful in your hearts. Was zanan tum zanna saw, and you had guessed an evil guess. Wa kun tum kaman bura, and definitely you are a people ruined. وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَإِنَّا عَتَنْدَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ السَّعِيرَ Whosoever doesn't believe in Allah and His Messenger, so we have for such disbelievers, we have prepared a blazing fire. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ سَمَاوَاتِ وَاللَّهِ To Allah belongs the kingdom and sovereignty of the heavens and the earth. يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاء وَيَعْزِمُ مَنْ يَشَاء He will forgive whomsoever He wills and chastise whomsoever He wills. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمَ and verily Allah is ghafoor and rahim, forgiving and merciful. سَيَقُولَ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ إِذُنْ تَلَقْتُمْ إِلَىٰ بَغَانِ بَلِ تَعْخُذُوهَا دَرُونَا نَتَّبِعْكُمْ Now when the Prophet decided to launch an attack on Khaybar, now these munafiqeen also said that we should go with him. You see, it seems that the tides have turned and Muhammad Wasallam will conquer Khaybar. And then there will be a lot of gharima, lot of booty. So we also want to go with you to Khaybar. Sayyakun al-Mukhallafun. Very soon those who were left behind, left behind during the Sulah Hudabiyah, they, they didn't go there for, the, for Umrah. When you set forth to take spoils, this is referring to the expedition of Khaybar. Rita khuduha. Zaruna natabekum. Allow us, permit us to go with you. Kazalikum kaal Allah min qabul. Kul lam tattabi'una. Yuriduna in yubaddalu kalam Allah. They want to change the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kul lam tattabi'una. Kazalikum kaal Allah min qabul. Allah has already said that you will not go with us. Fasa yakuluna bal tahsudunana. They will say you are jealous of us. بَلْكَانُوا لَا يَفْقَهُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا But the reality is that they understand not but a little. They wanted to go to Khaybar, but it was declared that only those will accompany the Messenger of Allah towards Khaybar who had gone with the intention of Umrah to Makkah. No else, nobody else will be able to accompany him. قُلْ لِلْمُخَلَّفِينَ مِنَ الْعَرَابِ O Prophet said to these people who were left behind from among the desert dwellers, سَتُدْعَوْنَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمٍ أُلِي بَاسٍ شَدِيدٍ Very soon you will be called to fight against a nation having a great might of war. تُقَاتِلُونَهُمْ أَوْ يُسْلِمُونَ Either you will go against them in fighting or they will surrender. فَإِن تُطِيعُوا يُوتِكُمُ اللَّهُ أَجْرًا حَسَنًا At that time, if you obey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you very good reward. وَإِنْ تَتَوَلَّوْا كَمَا تَوَلَّيْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ And if you will turn your backs, as you turned your backs before, يُعَزِّبْكُمْ عَزَابًا أَلِيمًا Allah will chastise you with a very painful chastise. Most of the interpreters, they say that this refers to the journey of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Tabuk. When there was a confrontation between the Prophet of Allah on the one side and the Roman Empire on the other side. Now there was call for everyone to accompany him. So it is referring to this. A time will come when your Iman will be again tested. And if you turn your backs at that time also, just as you turn your backs at the eve of this Sulah Hudabiyya, the, the Treaty of Hudabiyya, then you know you'll be chastised. Laisa'ad al-Aba arajun. There is no blame on the blind. Wala'ad al-Araj harajun. Now there is any blame on the lame. Wala'ad al-Mariz harajun. 
nor there is any blame on someone who is sick. وَمَنْ يُتَعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Whosoever obeys Allah and His messengers, يُدْخِلُوا جَنَّاتِ تَرِدِي مِتْرَاتِ الْأَنْحَارِ He will make them enter the gardens underneath which rivers will be flowing. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّبْ And whosoever turns his back, يُعَزِّبْهُ عَذَابًا عَلِيبًا He will chastise them, he will chastise him with a painful chastisement. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَلِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with the believers, is yubayyuna ka tahta shajara. When they were giving you, O Muhammad, their bayah, under that tree, a small tree was there, the prophet sat under the shade of that tree, and then the people coming one by one, and giving their bayah to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is called bayah to Rizwan. 1400 or 1800 people gave their bayah to him. فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah very well knew what was there in their hearts. Because till that time, treaty had not been concluded. And the rumor was that Hazrat Usman has been murdered. So it was to, to take an avenge. And this baya was for fighting. Baya al mawt No one of us will go from here, turn his back from the battlefield, although we might be killed, all of us. So what was in their hearts, you know? The... Iman, and you know, the love of martyrdom, martyrdom, or martyrdom, whatever you, how you pronounce it. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ اَزْ يُبَايِعُونَ كَتَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ فَعَلِمَ مَا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ فَأَنزَلَ سَكِينَةَ عَلَيْهِمْ So he sent down calm on them. وَعَسَابَهُمْ فَتْحًا قَرِيبًا And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rewarded them with a very near treaty. Now this near treaty is either number one, the, the treaty himself, near victory. Either it is the treaty of Hudaybiyah or this is the victory of Khaybar, which is referred here. وَمَغَانِمَ كَسِيرَةً And lot of spoils, يَا خُدُونَهَا which they will take. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا And verily Allah is all-powerful and all-wise. وَعَدَكُمُ اللَّهُ مَغَانِمَ كَسِيرَةً تَعْخُذُونَهَا Allah has promised you more spoils that you will capture. And فَعَجَّلَ لَكُمْ هَذِهِ And this victory at Hudabiyah, He has hastened to you. وَكَفَّ عَيْدِيَ النَّاسِ عَنْكُمْ He withheld the hands of the people from you. لِتَكُونَ آيَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ So that this becomes a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the believers. وَيَهْدِيَكُمْ سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا so that he guides you to the right path. وَأُخْرَى لَمْ تَخْتَرُوهَا And other victory also, which you have not been able to achieve up till now. لَمْ تَخْتَرُوهَا لَمْ تَخْتَرُوا عَلَيْهَا قَدْ أَحَاتَ اللَّهُ بِهَا But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encompassed it. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنْ قَدِيرًا And verily Allah is powerful over everything. This is the conquest of Khabar. وَلَوْ قَاتَ لَكُمُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Had these disbelievers of Makkah fought you, لَوَلَّهُ الْأَدْوَارِ They must have turned their backs to you. سُمَّ لَا يَجِدُونَ وَلِيًّ وَلَا رَسِيرًا And they would not have found after that for them any protector nor any helper. سُنَّةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي قَدْ خَلَقْ مِنْ قَبْلِ And this is the rule and practice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has been there for all those people who were before. وَلْنَطَّيْدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْعِيلًا And you won't find for the practices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any change. وَهُوَ الَّذِي كَفَّ أَيْدِيَهُمْ عَنْكُمْ And it is He who withheld your hands from them. وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ عَنْهُمْ وَأَيْدِيَهُمْ عَنْكُمْ Their hands from you and your hands from them. بِبَطْنِ مَكَّةً In the valley of Makkah. مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنْ أَسْفَرَكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ Although he had granted you victory over them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want that there should be a fight, there should be a battle at that time. And there are coming, you know, why the, what was the reason? This, this is given in the next ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he stopped the hands of the kuffar and stopped the hands of the Muslims. So no, no fighting. Why? And whatever you were doing, Allah was seeing it. 
ہم الزین کا فرو و سدو کو من المسجد الحرام اٹ از دے ہو ہیو ڈس بلیو نمبر ون و سدو کو من المسجد الحرام اینڈ ہو ہیو اسٹاپ یو فرام دی سیکرڈ باسک نمبر ٹو دیز آر دی کرائمز آف دی پیپل آف بکا ول ہدیا معکوفن اینڈ دی آفرنگ دی سیکریفائسز دے آر آلسو بینگ ود ہیلڈ فرام ریچنگ اٹس پلیس دیٹ از بکا آئی اب لوگا محل لہو وَلَوْ لَا رِجَالٌ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَنِسَاؤُن مُؤْمِنَاتٌ If there were no believing men and women in Mecca لَمْ تَعْلَمُوهُمْ Whom you didn't know أَن تَتَعُوهُمْ There was every possibility that you would have trampled on them When there is war Whosoever was in Mecca You would have taken them to the Tafis To unbelievers They might have been killed at your hands While they were Muslims They couldn't make hijrah. They couldn't come to Mecca. They didn't have to mean. They didn't have the means to travel to Mecca, for example. Laula rijalun mu'minu na wa nisaun mu'minatun. If there were not the believing men and women, lam ta'lamu hum, whom you didn't know, an ta'tawu hum, there was a possibility that you would have trampled over them. Fatusi ba kum minhu ma'aratan bi ghair alim. And thus there might befall upon you a guilt unknowingly. If that was not the case, we would have given you the clear victory after fighting. But we stopped fighting here. So that Allah admits to His mercy whomsoever He likes. If those Muslim and Mormon women and men had separated themselves from these kuffar, absolutely, لَوْ تَزَيَّلُوا رَعَزَّبْنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنُمْ عَزَابًا عَلِيمًا We would have chastised these unbelievers at this very moment with a very painful chastisement. But because they were mixed and it was every possibility that they would have been killed. إِذْ جَعَلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ حَمِيَّةَ الْجَاهِلِيَةَ When those who disbelieved had set up in their hearts pride and haughtiness of the pagan ignorance. فَانْزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَىٰ رَسُولِهِ But Allah set down His calm and tranquility over His messenger and over the believers. وَالْزَبَهُمْ كَلِمَ التَّقْوَىٰ And made them stick to the word of piety. وَكَانُوا أَحَقَّ بِهَا وَأَحْلَهَا For they had better right of it and they were worthy of it. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْنْ عَلِيمًا And definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّوِيَا بِالْحَقِّ Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shown His Messenger a true vision. It was not wrong. Some people said, O Prophet, you said that you saw in the vision that we are performing Umrah. And now we are going without performing Umrah. So Allah is giving this answer. Only it has been delayed. Otherwise, the vision is absolutely correct. And you know very soon, inshallah, you will enter the Masjid al Haram. This is the ayah. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّوِيَا بِالْحَقِّ Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had shown to His Messenger the vision, the truth. لَقَدْ غُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ You will surely enter the sacred mosque, inshallah, if Allah wills. آمِنِينَ Absolutely in peace. مُحَلَّقِينَ رَوْسَكُمْ وَمُقَسِّرِينَ Getting your heads shaved or your hair cut short. La takhafoon. You will have to fear none. Fa'alima ma'alam ta'alamu. Allah knows what you didn't know. Fa'jala min dune zalika fatan qareeba. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided before that a very near victory. Next year the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Muslims went there and as it was settled the Pagans and the Mushrikeen of Mecca, they vacated Mecca altogether. They ascended the nearby mountains. For three days, there were the Muslims only. No kafir. They performed the rites with full peace and calm. So before that, number one, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was declared to be a victory. Inna fatahna laka fatah mubida. And number two, the conquest of Khaybar. This came before this Umrah. This is called Umratul Qaza. 
that umrah which could not be performed, and they had to open their ihram without performing umrah. Now the qaza was, you know, that was done the next year. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُزِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ It is He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has sent His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam بِالْهُدَى with the guidance, the total guidance, the final guidance, وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ and the true deen, the true system of justice, political, social, economic justice, لِيُزِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّهِ so that He makes it supreme over the whole of the religions. وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient as a witness and as a helper. Muhammad Rasulullah. Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, صلى الله عليه وسلم. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those who are with him, that is the companions, رضي الله تعالى عنهم. أَشِدَّاوَ لَلْكُفَّارِ They are hard against the disbelievers. رُحَبَاوَ بَيْنَهُمْ Very merciful among each other, among themselves. Tarahum Rukran. You see them either bowing before Allah, sujjadan or prostrating before Him. Yamtahuna Fatma min Allah waridwana. Seeking the bounty from Allah and His player. Seema hum fi wujuhim min asari sujood. Their sign is in their faces. The effects of prostration. That is their zalika masaduhum fi tawrat. This is their similitude in Torah. Wa masaluhum fil injil as far their similitude in the gospel. Kazarin akhraja shatahu. Like a sown corn seed that puts forth its shoot. Kazarin akhraja shatahu. Fastaglada fastawa ala suqihi. And then strengthens it. And then it grows stout and rises straight on its stalk. Yo Zurra, delighting the growers, so that Yagiza Bihimul Kuffar, so that the disbelievers may be enraged and sorrowful. Now who is the Zurra? The Zarir here is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this farm is this Sahaba Kiram, Rizwanullah Ta'ala Majmai. Now when he sees this garden, you know, there was a time when a very few people were, were with him. Even as I told you, ten years after the beginning of Wahi, he couldn't have more than 125 people with him. But now, how many people are with him? So so that the, the field, you know, is giving full harvest. And the grower, you know, he becomes delighted. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ مِنْهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised those who believe and do good deeds among them. مَغْفِرَةً Number one, forgiveness. And number two, وَعَجِرًا عَزِيمًا And a very mighty reward. Surah Al-Hujarat It's comparatively a smaller surah, but very profound. It discusses with the fundamentals of Islamic polity. What are the fundamentals of Islamic society, Islamic state? How to strengthen, keep it strengthened? How to avoid the schisms and conflicts? And what is the basis of membership of Muslim society? And what's the basis of citizenship of an Islamic state? So very fundamental issues are, is, are discussed in this surah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله O you who believe don't put yourself ahead of Allah and His Messenger you have to keep behind them they have set a limit don't cross the limit تلك حدود الله فلا تعتدوها فلا تقربوها keep behind and fear Allah واتقوا الله إن الله سميع عليم ورلي الله is Listening everything and knowing everything. Ya ayu al-lazina amanu la tarfa'u aswata kum fa'u aswatin nabi. Oh you who believe, don't raise your voices above the Prophet's voice. Because it is disrespectful. The constitutional basis of Islamic society and state is 
the sovereignty belongs to Allah and the commands of Allah and Messenger will be supreme. No legislation can be done repugnant to the Quran and the Sunnah. This is the constitutional basis. But the basis of the solidarity of the Ummah, homogeneity of the Ummah, is the respect and love of Muhammad Just like you know, circle, the circle has a center. Center of this polity and, and society is Muhammad While the circumference of the circle, these are the commandments of Allah and His Messenger. You have to remain within this circle. If you have seen, you have gone out of the pain of Islam. But to keep yourself united, homogeneous, you have to tie yourself with the center. And center is the personality of Muhammad Respect him, love him, and never be disrespectful to him, even unintentionally. Don't raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet. And don't be loud in your speech to him as you are loud to one another. Because in this case there is a danger that all your good deeds are rendered fruitless or rewardless. This is such a big thing. This respect to Muhammad will deprive you of all the reward, all the reward of all your deeds that you have earned up till now. In the Lazina Yahuduna Swaka Bidda Rasulullah, verily those people who keep their voices low before the Messenger of Allah, they are the people whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested for piety. Now taqwa will be in these hearts. For them is the forgiveness and a very mighty reward. Verily, really, those who come and call out for you from behind the private apartments, they were the mosque and small hujras apartments for the wives of the Prophet Now the Prophet is there in some hujra, maybe of Hazrat Aisha or Hazrat Hafsa, and somebody Bedouin Arab comes from outside, and he calls, Oh Muhammad, Akhrujalena, come out, I want to meet you. Now this is disrespectful. Don't do this with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna ladhina yunaduna kami varai hujurat. Verily those who call out to you from behind the private apartments, aksarahum la yaqilun. Most of them don't have any sense. Because they are the Bedouins. They are coming from outside. They are the desert dwellers. They are not cultured. They are not civilized. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the next ayah, Allah forgives them. But in the future they must be careful. If they had waited, till that time that you would have yourself come out. You Actually it was his timetable when he is to come out, when he has to take rest. So according to your own timings, if they should have waited, that you, you come out yourself. Lakana khair allahum. This would have been much better for them. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. Allah is forgiving and merciful. Because they didn't mean the insult. But only because they were uncivilized, uncultured people. They were doing that. So there is the advice, don't do it again. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to bring you to the book and punish you. Ya ayu alladhina amanu injakum fasikum binaba in fatabayyanu. Oh, you believe... If some unrighteous person comes to you with a very important news, then verify it. Lest you should afflict a people in ignorance. And then you have to become remorseful on what you did. Somebody says, oh, that tribe is preparing to invade you. And you preempt and go and attack them. Because the news had come that they were preparing to attack. And then it might be that it came to the knowledge that the, the news, this was a rumor, wrong rumor. So what will be the result? You will be remorseful. You will be blamed. So when some, if some person who is very pious, dependable, if Abu Bakr brings some news, there is no need of verification. But if some person who is not righteous, 
if he is bringing to you some news, then verify them before you take any step. And it, let it be known to you that within, amongst you is the messenger of Allah. What does it mean? He is Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ibn Abdul Muttalib, yes. But his real position is he is Muhammad Rasulullah. Don't take him to be a man like the other men. Any Qarshi, a Qarshi like other Qarshis. A Hashmi like other Hashmi, Hashmites, no, no. The real position which you should keep in front of you, in your mind, always, that he is the messenger of Allah. You know, this is very really important. Because for Aisha, radiallahu anha, Muhammad was the husband. But at the same time, he was the messenger of Allah. She must have this position before her mind, before that position of husband and wife. In the same way, Abu Bakr was father-in-law of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What does it mean? Muhammad was like a son to him, son-in-law. But no, 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 no. He is Rasulullah. So you keep this position of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in view. Walamu anna fiqum Rasulullah. It should be known to you that you have amongst you the messenger of Allah. Now you tiyo kum fi kasiri min amri laadit tum. If he were to obey you in many matter, you would certainly be in trouble. Don't, don't want that your opinion he should take. No, no. You should always wait what is his opinion. Don't force upon him your opinions. You should also wait so that his opinion comes forward. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made iman, faith, very beautiful in your hearts. Bazayyanahu fi kulubikum. He made it very beautiful. And it is endeared to you. Wa karraha ilaykum al kufra wal fusuka wal isyan. And he has made hateful to you the disbelief, the wickedness, and the disobedience. Ulaikahumur rashidun. Verily, they are the rightly guided. This is the word rashidun. Al khulafaur rashidun. The four pious caliphs. And all the sahaba are rashidun. This is about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is a bounty from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and a blessing. Wallahu Alimun Hakim, he is the knower, the wise. Now another instruction. If two parties, two groups from among the Muslims, Mumins, believers, they fight with each other. Anyhow, they are human beings. There can be differences, there can be conflicts, and these can go to the level of fighting. But now what is the instruction? Number one, make peace between them. No indifference. Let them settle their affairs themselves. What to me? No, 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 no. It's, it's your duty. Make peace between them. And now if what someone is doing wrong to the other, now you have to fight against that, that, that group which is transgressing. Till it reverts to the Allah's command, to the command of Allah. When it reverts, then again make a treaty between them, peace between them, with justice, and be equitable. Surely Allah loves the equitables. In Allah yuhibbul muqsateen. Now this is the law, this is the rule, no indifference. If there is a conflict in the ummah, what's the result? The total strength, collective strength of the ummah is weakened. This ummah has to perform the biggest mission that has been assigned to it. For that it should be strong, unified, unity, united. So whenever there is some conflict, what you say, nip the evil in the bud. Stop it here, there and then. Try to make the peace. And if somebody, some group is transgressing, then now it is not a matter between these two groups. It is as if that group is challenging the whole ummah. Now the whole ummah should come and fight against it. Innam al ikhwatun. Verily, all the moments, all the believers are brothers to each other. Fasnehu bayna khawaykum. So you should make peace between your two brothers. Wattakullaha al-allakum turhabun. 
and have the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you should be shown mercy. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu, now there are six commandments. Don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Three in one ayah, three in one ayah. These are the things, although they appear to be very trifles, very small things, but these things, you know, sometimes break the hearts of the people. And you know, the bond of love is broken, and some seeds of enmity are sown. What are those? Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu la yasr qawmin min qawmin. Oh, you who believe, don't scoff at another people. Asa'an yakunu khairam minhum. Maybe that they are better than them. You are laughing at a person, as a Muslim, as a Muslim brother. Maybe in the eyes of Allah, he is more respectful. And you are mocking at him. Maybe he is hurt. If he is hurt, now that seed of enmity is sown in his heart. وَلَانِسَاؤُنْ مِنْ نِسَائِنْ In the same way, no women should scoff at and laugh at other women. أَسَا يَكُلْنَ خَيْرًا مِنْ هُنَّا They should think that's possible that though they are better than them. وَلَا تَلْمِزُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't defame each other. وَلَا تَنَابَدُوا بِلَا الْقَابِ And don't revile each other with nicknames which they don't like. Very evil is even, every evil is even a bad name after true faith. When you have become moments, now these things are very bad. You may say, I don't mean, I didn't mean it. But why did you say it? It doesn't become of a truly believing Muslim to do these things. Because they can sometimes injure the feelings of the person. And that will be a rift in the Ummah. If two Muslims, they are displeased with each other, the, the bond of love is weakened somehow, well, the weakness goes to the total strength of the Ummah. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ Whosoever don't repent and give up these things, فَأُولَائِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Very then they are the evil doers. يَا أَيُّوا الَّذِينَ آمَنِ تَنِبُوا كَزِيرًا مِنَ الظَّنِ now, another three things. Oh, you who believe, avoid much of suspicion. Without any reason, you suspect that he, this person is an enemy of me. He's not a well-wisher. He is an evil-wisher for me. No. Do you have any proof? No. In the Bible, the Nismun, verily, some of the suspicions become a sin. Don't spy on each other. Don't backbite one another. Will any one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother? Now, why this similitude? When your brother is dead, he can't defend himself. You can cut away any piece of flesh from his body. When a brother is not present, and you are backbiting. You are saying something bad about him. He is not there. He cannot defend himself. Maybe you are wrong. Maybe the information that reached you is wrong. Maybe you were under some wrong notion and impression. Had he been present here, he could defend his honor. So there is a similarity between these two things. Will any one of you like to eat the flesh of his dead brother. So this you abhor, to move. But backbiting you go on doing. Although at the moral level it is the same thing as eating the flesh of a dead brother. In Allah Tawabu and have fear of Allah. Verily Allah is relenting and merciful. That is, He accepts rep repentances. Now this Muslim society and Muslim state, what is its relationship with the rest of humanity? On the two bases. Here, Ya Yuhan Nas, note, five times in this small surah, Ya Yuhan Lazeen Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazeen Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazeen Amanu, Ya Yuhan Lazeen Amanu, small surah, 
Five times this headless. Oh, you who believe. But now, yeah, you know why. Now, the things which are being discussed in this ayah, they are common to all human beings, all mankind, whether they are Muslims or Kafirs. Ya you nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum. We have created you all. Means the karin or unsa. From one male and one female. Adam and Eve. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لَتَعَرَفُوا And then we have made you into nations and tribes so that you can recognize each other, know each other. He belongs to that tribe, he belongs to that tribe. When you see somebody and see from the distance you say he is a Chinese. Now his features are different, his color of skin is different. So you recognize him, he is Chinese. And this fellow who is coming, he is some African from some you know, a black country, and so on. Now you have the knowledge of their background, historical background, their geographical background. All these things are with you. So all these differences that he has made in your colors, in your features, and divided you into tribes and nations, the purpose is that you, can, you should be able to recognize each other. You know, if there are two twin brothers, sometimes it becomes difficult to identify one from the other. To recognize one from the other. Had all the human beings, you know, the same, if they had the same features, the same color, absolutely equal, how could, you know, people recognize each other? Inna akramakum in the But these things are not the basis of honor and respect. Verily, the most noble and the noblest one amongst you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is most pious who has the maximum fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has the maximum regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who keeps within the limits of the Sharia to his maximum utmost. He is the most respectful. Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything and he is aware of everything. Now here let me quote H.G. Wells, who is very famous as a scientific fiction writer. He has written two books on the history of the world, a short history of the world and a concise history of the world. And he has criticized Muhammad Sallallahu like anything. Due to this polygamy, because this they can't swallow, it's a bitter pill, you know. The Westerners can't anyhow accept it. And so other things, just like Salman Rushdie, he has criticized bitterly. But in the end of the chapter, in the concise history of the world, he quotes from the sermon of the last Hajj. لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأحمر على أسودا ولا لأسودا على أحمر إلا بالتقوى كلكم بنو آدم وآدم من تراب. There is no superiority for any Arab over any non-Arab. In the same way, no superiority of any non-Arab over an Arab. No superiority of some white over some black. In the same way, no superiority of any black over any white. But with taqwa. On the basis of taqwa and nothing else. Adam. You are all progeny of Adam. Adam in Turab. And Adam was created out of clay. And then he says, these words you must remember. Although the sermons of human fraternity, freedom and equality were said before also, we find a lot of such sermons with Jesus of Nazareth, but it must be accepted that it was Muhammad who for the first time in his human history established a society based on these principles. Human Fraternity, equality, all these things. Freedom. On these principles, the first ever society established in the world throughout human history was the one established by Muhammad. But there is a note of caution. You know, this note has been removed from the new edition of this book, Concise History of the World. But you can go to some older edition and find the quotation. 
Yes, you sh should go and see the, the new edition, and then you will have, you will doubt, you know, my integrity. So you must, you will have to refer to some older edition of the book, Concise History of the World by H.G. Wells. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وإياكم بالآيات مسلك الحكيم الله أكبر الله أكبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.